Hello everyone, and welcome to another uh, Dwarven Tavern review. Uh, this time we are reviewing uh, the Pathfinder book, Bestiary 6. Um, <clears throat> now, you may think to yourself, uh, you know, at your leisure. <laughs> um, no, but you may think to yourself, what is uh, one Bestiary over another and why would you need to review yet another book of monsters? And, uh, well, it's... Because the thing of it is, when, when you have a large number of uh, possible characters, uh, or, or, or monsters, I guess, um, <laughs> duh, uh, when you have a large number of monsters and the, and the parade just keeps on uh, passing by, uh, you know, you may think that one, one book is just as good as another, but instead, what you, you sometimes get is, um, you know, the first book's great, and the second book is just as good, and the third book maybe almost, and then the fourth book, and it just keeps, you know, going down like that. And uh, sometimes it does. Um, uh, nothing comes to mind right offhand, but uh, as far as uh, games go with multiple layer, multiple uh, volumes of monsters, but uh, for this book, um, it is number six. And uh, I guess in in honor of uh, you know the number six, uh, six six perhaps. Um, is it sixty-six dollars? No, um, it's forty-four ninety-nine. But if you turn ninety-nine upside down, then it's two sixes, and that goes in with sixes, so six six six. Um, <laughs> I totally, I'm totally just making that up. Also, so um, anyway, uh, in in uh, I don't know if it was on purpose or not. Uh, but uh, there are a lot of other worldly uh, creatures in this, specifically uh, creatures of the lower planes. It starts out with um, Helgramites, giant Helgramites. Holy crap. Giant Helgramites are awful. Regular sized Helgramites are awful creatures. But a lot of the creatures in this book are fey. Um, and. Um, outsiders, extra planar, uh, and uh, I, I have found them to be uh, extremely, uh, extremely well done. And it's not just because it's Paizo, because you know how I am about people resting on their laurels. The, the longer a company does their thing, the, the more you have to keep an eye on them because, you know, at any point in time they can be, they can say like, you know, well, if we're doing it, it's good. And that's not, that's not the case. Um, it should be good because you're doing it, not, it's good, no. It should, you should be doing it because it's good, <laughs> not the other way around. Um, figure that one out. Uh, however, um, in this book, in, uh, in, in number six, we have uh, a list of arch devils uh, like Beelzebul, um, who is. I mean, all of these these figures are incredibly. I mean, the artwork is it's it's smashing as as per usual. Um, it's sm simply smashing. Um, Barbatos, uh, Belial, um, Dispater. Garion, uh, Memon, Mephistopheles, or Mephistopheles, <laughs> and you can, you can pronounce these any way you choose. I think I shall henceforth know him as Mephistopheles. Um, 
But uh, yeah, Mephistopheles is in there. Uh, Moloch. And then it has uh, a number of other, like uh, other out, uh, other world, other other world of creatures like the Azata. Um, it's got a, a, a large number of fey, and it has regular creatures in it, like you know, just normal uh, cave blights. Um, uh, and it's got just uh, a non. Uh, it's got oozes and so forth. Uh, fey, as I said, it has regular plants in it. Um, the Bogart is freaking horrifying looking. Um, artwork is great. I love it. Um, and uh, the thing about this book is, uh, you know, as with other uh, Pathfinder uh, bestiaries, is uh, that. Uh, the the descriptions are are very well done. The uh, the backstories and the the flavor text, uh, as it were, is uh, is uh, well written. And uh, the creatures themselves are they are uh, weird and uh, thought provoking. They, uh, they, they actually, uh, what's the word? It, it, well, they're inspiring. I mean, like, um, on page 58 is the Clockwork Angel. It is a neutral medium construct. Um, it's made of brass, bronze, well, here's a flavor text for you. Uh, brass, bronze, and silver components adorn this angelic figure. Moving gears are visible within the gaps of its metallic body. So, uh, this clockwork creature uh, is uh, it's neutral, but it says here, uh, clockwork angels are usually built in accord with divine agencies to serve as defenders of holy sites, but are themselves not intrinsically agents of goodness. Indeed, certain evil sects enjoy the irony of constructing beatific uh, faux angels. What's it faux? <laughs> it's it faux protecting your site. Um, to guard their profane temples. In such cases, clockwork angels' appearance is often augmented is often augmented with grisly additions meant to blaspheme against enemy faiths. Such, uh, yet such changes are largely cosmetic and have no effect on the creatures. Uh, statistics. So, um, it's, uh, you know, th this gives me several ideas for a couple of different campaigns that's going on right now. Well, not this very moment, but, uh, and then you've got the Clockwork Fiend, Clockwork Guardian, etc., etc. And the Clockwork Hound, which would probably be my favorite. Imagine having a puppy dog that would never die, never get old and die. You have to oil him, but probably not. So, uh, anyway, uh, as, it, as it were, uh, there are a large and varied... Uh, assortment, as is with all of the, the Pathfinder uh, tomes, uh, the volumes, uh, they're, it's just, it's fantastic. I just, I just love it. And I can't wait for number seven, because I know it's, it's probably, it's probably on its way. Um, they have uh, uh, demons, D- the, the D-A-E-M-O-N, the A-E diphthong is pronounced E as in Mycenae, um, also as in demon. Uh, there's demons and there's demons. And these demons are, uh, they're not chaotic neutral, they're neutral evil. And uh, they're, <laughs> uh, they're, they're terrible. Um, like the Suspira demon. There's an old uh, Italian horror movie called Suspiria, and I think that's where they got this. 
the Suspira Demon. A three-legged vulture with an octopus tentacle for a tongue. So, there you have it. Wake up to that and try to... Whatever it does. Um, oh, suffocates. <laughs> it's perfect. Um, a creature affected by the demon's strangle ability cannot breathe and must hold its breath. Because of the demon's thin air aura, this can quickly render an opponent unconscious. So, um, although holding your breath when you're being strangled is not really, that's not really accurate because if it's a strangle, if it's a strangle strangle, then, you know, there's other things happening besides your air being cut off. Um, one thing is the blood, I mean, the, 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 the strangle hold, the, the, the sleeper hold. It presses against the uh, the carotid artery and the and the jugular vein, cutting off blood circulation to the brain, and that's why you pass out. It's not because of the lack lack of air. So that might be a little thing there, but um, yeah, you know, the suspension of disbelief is still uh, healthy and intact. Um, and then you have other ghastly, multi tentacled barely human horrors like the the Tamer the the Temer demon maybe perhaps um, it uh, is absolutely atrocious it's just a it's just a mass of uh, misshapen human limbs with long white hair and a head human head but Ain't none of it right. <laughs> Walks on all fours because it has four legs with four feet. Um, and it's got like feet where hands should be. And then it's got hands growing out of its back, arms, stuff. So, yeah. The artwork, again, fantastic. So, um, all that being said, uh, it's it's just fantastic. I mean, it, it this could... It, it's frustrating because there's only so many hours in a day <laughs> and there's only so many um, so many uh, gaming hours and there's only so many different monsters you can throw into a single campaign at any given time so it, it's I mean because all of these I, I don't think any of them are dumb honestly um, and I always thought there was at least one or two you know dumb things like um, the Modrons, okay. Uh, you may like the Modrons, and if you do, that's fine. But I think, you know, I don't use them in my campaigns because they, to me, they are the, just about the dumbest things. And I realize they're they're uh, what Mechanus or Limbo or one of those, whichever whichever plane they're associated with, um, because you've got the 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 Unidrone that does one thing only. Uh, it kept following one command, and you've got the all the way up to like the Decadrone and the, the High Modron, and it's all based on uh, geometric, the Tridrone, Quadrone, and uh, I, I, did, I just think it's dumb. Um, it, and it's and it's really kind of cool because it's based on geometry and you know and the the uh, anyway. But there's nothing like that in here, so so I highly recommend it. Um, so including the psychopomps, and those are not just like multicolored platform shoes. <laughs> They're high heels. Um, psychopomp is a uh, creature unto itself, and you know I the the Shoki and the Viduus. Uh, I think I might have. It seems like I've seen this artwork before, but I think it was in a preview of the book before it was released. So um, I think that's where I've seen it before. Um, I would I would never think that uh, with the uh, with the artists uh, the uh, 
the, the armada of artists <laughs> they have at their disposal. I don't think they'd ever have to borrow anything from any of their other works or re reuse or recycle anything. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was from a, a, a previous uh, uh, heads up that I received uh, that uh, allowed me to the, why I've seen these before. Anyway, um, there's an interesting creature in here called the Tenome, which is a monstrous humanoid who has the eyes in the palms of his hands, and it reminds me a lot of the uh, Pan's Labyrinth creature where he held his, his hands up over his eyes, or where his eyes should have been, to put his eyes there, because they were in the palms of his hands. And that was horrifying, so... So, um, good art, uh, well written, uh, inspired and inspiring creatures in here, uh, with a largely other world flavor. Uh, I'm going to give it uh, uh, 5 out of 5 axes, uh, because I really want to play all of the things in here. Um, and uh, I can't say that about every monster book that I've seen. And, uh, you know, the artwork's fantastic. It's all, it's all you know, top of their game kind of stuff. So, highly recommend it. It's uh, Pathfinder's uh, Bestiary 6. Uh, get it while you can. I don't know why you couldn't. But <laughs> it goes for uh, $44.99 at your uh, better bookstores and uh, pop probably online as well. So uh, pick it up, add it to your collection as I have with mine, this in here. And uh, so yeah, yeah, five axes, best series six. Okay, so um, on that note, uh, it's, it is, and it is a good one. I uh, can't wait for the next edition. Uh, upcoming uh, videos that we're going to have are, uh, I'm going to continue the Rifts thing, um, rolling on a character, the votes are in, and, uh, and I've kind of made a decision, so we're going to be, I'm going to be doing that. So, uh, with no further delay, uh, on behalf of the entire cast and crew of the Dwarven Tavern, I am your host, Dr. Jeff Goins, wishing you to want for nothing but adventure. And at first I feared it, then I charged. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.